A new book is out detailing the death of Rebecca Zahau nearly 10 years after she was reported hanging at the Spreckles Mansion in Coronado. News 8's David Gofferson interviewed the author who did extensive research into the controversial case. Death on Ocean Boulevard inside the Coronado Mansion case. True crime author Caitlin Rother takes the deepest dive ever into the death of Rebecca Zahau in her new 368-page book, Death on Ocean Boulevard. The author spent five weeks in court in 2018 when a civil jury found Adam Shacknight liable for the death of his brother's girlfriend at the Spreckles Mansion in 2011. Did Adam Shacknight touch Rebecca Zahau before Rebecca Zahau's death with the intent to harm her? The answer is yes. Rother interviewed Zahau's billionaire boyfriend Jonah Shacknight eight times and poured over thousands of pages of investigative reports. But despite her in-depth research, she's still undecided on whether it was suicide or murder. I'm not sure that we'll ever know, honestly. I mean, I, I went back and forth the whole time that I was investigating this book, and I would be, you know, never 100% sure either way. After a seven-week investigation, Sheriff Bill Gore ruled Zahau's death a suicide, a manner of death the author, Caitlin Rother, is all too familiar with. My husband not only killed himself, he c killed himself by hanging. In her book, Rother explores why Zahau may have been distraught after learning her boyfriend's six-year-old son, Max, was essentially brain-dead following his fall from a second-floor banister inside the mansion while Zahau was babysitting him. And according to the author, Zahau was molested as a child, and she once faked her own kidnapping in order to break up with an old boyfriend. The more I learned about her and her past, the more I started to see some parallels between her and my husband, and I'm not saying you know, that I think she committed suicide. I'm just saying I think it's possible. Rother also interviewed Adam Shacknai, who she discovered had taken Ambien on the night Zahau died. He would just say weird things. That At one point, the author felt threatened herself by a series of text messages Adam Shacknai was sending her. They're just rants. And he would sometimes, you know, eventually direct those at me. And it was not pleasant. <laughs> I wouldn't f***ing waste my time killing Rebecca Zahau. I never touched her. Adam Shacknai was the only person at the mansion the night Zahau died. He called 911 to report she was hanging naked, hands and feet bound with rope, and a t-shirt stuffed in her mouth. In her book, Rother questions the sheriff's investigation of Adam Shacknai. Why didn't they take Adam's phone? Why didn't they look at his phone records? Why didn't they, you know, see where he was? Because they do that in most cases, right? Just to, to back up somebody's story, just to even confirm that he's telling the truth, and they never did that. The Zahau family still believes Rebecca was murdered. They want the case reopened. I think this case could be reopened if Sheriff Gore steps down or gets beaten in the next election. David Godfordson, News 8. The Zahau family filed a new lawsuit last year seeking more investigative records from the Sheriff's Department. A hearing is set for July.